wanted to make this video on how to set up the Yaesu FT991A, how to do some things on the, on the uh, program. Uh, one of the first things that I want to show is how to put your name on the display for when you turn it on and off. Basically, you hit menu, hold it. It says my call. You could go here and type in, you know, your name or erase it. You hit enter. Uh, it's already on there. When you shut off the radio, when you turn it back on, it says your name on the display. Another thing is, is, is basically the basic operation of the VFO. So basically, you go, this is memory, and this is VFO, okay? You could go to the station that you want to you wanna go to, right? Or the channel, this is CB right now, right? Uh, you could go to mode, you know, pick from lower sideband, upper sideband, AM or FM. Okay, I'm on AM right there. If I wanted to go to sideband, I would just press that. Right? Now, let's say, for example, I want to program this channel into the memory of the radio. Right? Basically, what I do is I tap the AM button, which is here. Oh, sorry. AM. And it shows me all the channels that are already programmed. If you never programmed a radio before, it will be the first available box. You pick an empty slot, you press and you hold it. It's already saved into memory, right? Now let's say you want to label that channel that you just added, right? You press F list and you hold it. And now you select the new the frequency you're on, you hit tag, and you could put out, you know, let's say that's the, the bug out station. You hit enter, right? Now, when you hit uh, memory, it says bug out, right? Now, one thing that took me a while to learn was how to scroll through these channels, right? And basically, the setting is easy. You go to menu, I'm sorry, go to F list. You look for the button that says MCH. And that would allow you to use the selector here to scroll through your channels. It took me a year and a day to figure out how to do that. Okay? But basically, using the tricks that I taught you, you go in there, label your stations. Like you see how I have WFAN. You know, these are New York City stations. Some channels on CB that I monitor. Um, some frequencies on 2 meters that I monitor and you're able to uh, access them, right? Another thing that I wanted to show you guys is on these lower frequencies, right? The uh, Where the uh, radio stations are at, they're a good indicator for when you have interference. I learned this yesterday, right? Let's say, for example, uh, I'm attuned to 880, right? Which is a strong radio station here in New York, right? Okay, you see all that, right? All that weather center. Weather Basically, the signal is strong, right? But sometimes when you're getting uh, interference from electrical items, such as like transformers or power adapters, you'll see it in between here as a whole bunch of blue static here. Like right now, it's pretty much quiet. If you look in between the stations here, it's pretty much quiet. But if all this was blue and, and filled in, then you know you're getting a hum or you're getting something from something that you have plugged in either to the power strip or to the outlet of your radio. Okay? So just to recap, you know, I'll show you guys how to, um, you know, you press this and you can go through the memories on your, on your radio. And you could tune in through your radio stations. Now you know how to label it. Okay. Uh, I might post another few videos, you know, a few more videos once I get a chance. You know, um, when I figure out the radio a little bit more.
but basically that's my setup okay another thing I wanted to add was the modifications that you guys see for Mars and caps online where you jump a solder bridge that works and basically what you do is you take the top screws of the radio off the bottom screws you're able to pull the front display off behind the front display on the main body of the radio there's like a metal cover that has six screws and one ground cable that goes to the chassis you take those screws out plus the ground wire you go behind it and when you when you look up on the other YouTube videos you'll see where the guy solders a bridge next to uh, I think it's a resistor and that enables the radio to work on 11 meters so that works I was able to do it myself you just have to be a little bit careful and a little bit patient when you do the soldering okay so take care talk to you later